Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Tragically, on April 15, 2014, Katie Paris, Lawrence Hong, Jordan Segura, Josh Hunter, and Zachariah Rathwell were murdered by Matthew DeGroote in the worst homicide in Calgary's history. Because Mr. DeGroote was classified as not criminally responsible, a mental health review is convened periodically to assess him. And I know that the families of the victims intend on attending all of these panels on a go-forward basis. To the Minister of Justice, with great respect, these families are continually reliving this horrific incident. Have you met with them in person? And if so, what supports Thank you, Honourable have you Member. offered? Honourable Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and to the member for a very important question. Of course, all families uh, of victims of homicide are incredibly affected by the experience. Uh, Mr. Speaker, that's why I've taken so much time to meet with victim support advocates, to meet with um, uh, a support group uh, for the families of uh, murdered individuals. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we know that this is a tragic and difficult circumstance for these people, and that's why we're moving forward with a review of victims of crime funding to see what additional supports we can provide. Thank you, Honourable Members. Given that this horrific crime continues to have an impact on Calgary at large, but more specifically on those who knew the victims, as well as all of those who attended so post-secondary institutions which the victims were studying at when they were murdered, and given that the rights of the victims should always come first, again to the Minister, what specific supports has your government put in place to assist with suffering and loss which numerous Albertans continue to experience because of this horrible crime. Honourable Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and to the member for the important question. Um, the government provides an enormous amount of uh, programming through the Victims of Crime Fund uh, that people have access to. Uh, in order to seek the supports that they need, Mr. Speaker. That crime, uh, Victims of Crime Fund, as uh, people will be well aware, has been reviewed by the Auditor General uh, because of the increasing surplus over the last decade. Uh, we are moving forward to ensure that we're doing a gaps analysis and that we're moving forward to make sure that that money gets to where it's attended to making sure uh, the victims of crime are properly supported. Families and friends would love to see specifics. Now, given that this case was presided over by a Court of Queen's Bench Justice and is therefore a matter with, which is within the purview of a federal Minister of Justice, and given that the structure of the Mental Health Review Panel means that the families and friends of the victims must continually relive this tragic incident, something none of us want to see. Again, to the Minister, have you contacted your federal counterpart about this case to advocate on behalf of the victims, families, and friends in order to reduce their suffering in every way possible? Honourable Minister. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, as the member will no doubt be aware, uh, the Government of Canada is uh, looking at several fronts in terms of uh, reviewing criminal code processes. They have acknowledged that this is a shared responsibility as between the federal government uh, and the provincial governments, which is uh, great news because the previous government wouldn't do it, Mr. Speaker. Uh, moving forward, we have been having conversations about how to streamline this process and make it easier for everyone, uh, including victims of crime, uh, as well as the public, Mr. Speaker.